And a, and a, another interesting question, how are Celtic going to improve themselves? How are they going to improve yeah, themselves? They, what are they going to bring? We're all talking about they've got a decent full-back in Johnson. They've yeah. got two decent centre-halves. They've got a midfield McGregor, Hatati and O'Reilly. And they've got a back-up to that. They've got Jota, Maida. What kind of player are you going to bring in to stroll into that team? Uh, well, I, I think... I, I think let, me, let, me th- let me throw three at you. Um, if, if I was picking three additions to that squad right now on the basis that Cameron Carter Vickers is still fit, Starfelt doesn't leave, Kobayashi comes in, um, I think they might, if, if I was thinking three or four, they might look at another centre half as cover, but winger, midfielder, centre forward. Better of, than Hatta be, and McGregor. Well, uh, to, you know, at Champions League level, it needs somebody, a winger, to go beyond a defender. Well, they're they're going to have to, they're they're going to, have to bring in better for that level because the bottom line was that last year it wasn't good enough. Yeah. And they and they played in and get knocked out of three European yeah. competitions. Now, it's okay with Celtic's uh, vast riches and even their vast riches compared to their oldest rivals, Rangers. It's okay them doing the celebrations and looking forward to a treble and all the rest of it. And they have a Inverness of course uh, but again we need to have to dip their toe back into the, the hot hot water of uh, European football that's where the complexion completely changes and, and that's why if you're real it, it, it's easy to maybe be realistic about it because I'm not a Celtic Rangers fan but two weeks ago when we were talking Peter um, you know that's how if I was a Celtic fan I'd say bring on three bring on the group of death to beat all groups of death for the Champions League and let's just coin it and and hope that we get money that helps kind of bolster our, uh, our Europa League campaign because that's their level yeah well that's a boardroom attitude to it I think you know great the manager's attitude is completely different he wants a team that can get him out of that group stage that's where he'll look and he'll say to himself you know that increases his own credibility but it gets Celtic to a point that some other managers, Neil Lennon I include, Gordon Strachan who managed it, Martin O'Neill didn't. Um, but that's where he wants to be, that's his ambition you on would it. Agree, you would agree that this present group aren't they good enough for a European group stage? Well the evidence is stage. there Ruffy. the evidence They're not is good there. enough, they, they oh, failed miserably, so what do you bring in to get well, them into well, that he group? Knows that. He's got that job well, to do. All, if it's, all I'm saying is the Celtic, as the Rangers supporters will be anticipating what Rangers are going to be doing Celtic supporters will be anticipating how are we going to get in that group stage what's he going to no they're automatically how they're going to get out, out of it, it. Yeah. yeah so right. what kind of player is going to get them out of it because of the present squad have proved they're lightweight to get in there well I've given you the you thing know, so no, I'm just saying it'll be yeah. interesting what Celtic are going to do as well as what Rangers well, are going to do one thing I would say though is you don't know Celtic played in a group which is a difficult group yeah sometimes you learn by defeats yeah, maybe absolutely. the team's grown over the last 30 games, 40 games. Maybe they've become a bit more streetwise. Maybe they have become more difficult to beat, more resilient. Who knows? And, and the manager himself will know that internally if he thinks you know that the team's improved, it's progressed. G- g- granted, you, you'll need a smattering of one or two better players right enough. But Ruffy makes a good point. They're a good, they're a good side. You yeah. know, it's, Neil. Uh, you know, the only thing I can say that is beyond anybody contradicting me, whether it's on our feed or anywhere else, when you go to press conferences, listen to managers. When you speak to them privately, listen to managers and what they say. That Celtic side were not good enough to get out of that group. He wants to improve certain players. He's already gone on record as saying, I'm not interested in crowd favourites, fans' favourites. If they move on, they move on. You know, he wants players that can get him to that next level. And I do not think, you know, I once asked him at a press conference, you know, do you have a bit of sympathy when a guy scores a hat trick and he's not, in, he's not in the team the next week? And he went, no, I just put the team up, mate, he said, and that's it. And they can like it or lump it. That's his attitude. His attitude is, how can I get a team together that will take me and this side to where I want to go? And he has got no kind of a, I'm not saying he's without compassion. He's got a goal in his mind of how he's going to go about it. And that, if that's a fan's favourite, tough, because he needs a higher calibre of player. Well, well that's the point I'm trying to make. When is that player going to come in? Well, would you to want get to give you a date? No, no, to get them out, we've not heard any sound bites. We've no. Well, he's already said. Well, he's already said. No, what do you want to say? The point I'm making, the point I'm making, Maida's top class. 
Kyogo's top class, Jota's top class, Hatati's top class, McGregor's top class, the two centre halves, the two, maybe the, the other foot, the other foot back. So, what kind of player you're is. Talking, you're talking no, nonsense. These they're guys are top all, class. Well, I know they're, they're not top class. You've just said they're top class. They're top class in our league. They're head and shoulders above everybody's here. Where is the point? We've only qualified for one major tournament for Scotland in about 30 years. What's going to cost to bring in the player that gets him out of the group? He's got a budget and he needs those three players whether he's able to get that level that can do it but Maeda missed from six yards out against Real Madrid I'm sorry he knows you need to score goals Maeda might run away from James Tavernier he's not running away from somebody else in the Champions League group stages Neil no, no. so what the point, so the point I'm trying to make is this present group are you agreeing that this present group will not be good enough to get at a group stage well there's two there's two imponderables there right one I can tell you for a fact he's looking he's looking for two or three players of a higher standard again. Well, the where, second part where would is, you say where would you say that they're needed to get you at the group in, stage? In Scotland I don't know where he, where he's looking, what he's got the agents doing. No, I'm saying what, them. what positions in this present I've, Celtic I've, I've team would you, you say? Yeah, he's a winger, a number ten and a striker. For me, that's what I would look for. If I still talking, think if he's going to. about the Champions League, where does he need to improve? You can almost go through the entire team from back to front. Says if you've got any aspirations in the actual Champions League, then that team that you've got to know, you need guys like them who are all a wee bit better. And it goes back to the situation that Celtic and Rangers have faced in the past, where, okay, in my opinion, Maravchik was top, top class, great number 10. Yeah. And that's an example of where you can find a gem somewhere. But generally speaking, a Champions League player isn't coming to Rangers and Celtic because oh, you're right. they don't want to play in Scotland and maybe they can't pay exactly what they want. So you have to unearth... Like Kyogo's been a revelation since he came to Scotland. So you need those type of players. That Celtic's a good move for them. Champions League's a good stage for them and the money's acceptable. But it's a certain... Yeah, certain and bracket. by the way, he, he needs to, with his, his scouting department like John Park and the rest of the scouting team at Rangers, need to come up with a certain standard of play that's going to be acceptable. You know, and, and by the way, if you think Celtic and Rangers are in a difficult market to try and attract people, and they say, by the way, you might get European football, um, but you have to play at a few grounds where you kind of believe it's a wet you know, September night, <laughs> think, think about the Mullerwell manager nah, he's nah, in a totally nah, he's, 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 he's literally saying to himself I'm going to Argos and hope I can afford a half decent well, over I remember Jim McIntyre used to say when he was a Ross County manager he would offer decent money they would know exactly how much players were on in League 1 and League 2 in England but those players in League 1 and League 2 wanted the Ross County premium they're not going up there for the same oh, money as no. they're getting in League 1 and League 2, so you've got to pay more. Oh, exactly. It was, and it, it was tough. It was tough it, to you know what? We, we, from time to time in our show, we, we, we talk about that great 1983 Dundee United team, right? Yeah. And we say that they weren't particularly fancy. I'd love to know what the odds had been back then. Uh, we're going back 40 years now, of course, but they wouldn't have been particularly fancied, I'm sure, at the start of that season to necessarily win uh, the league, right? Jim McLean was building the team, but famously, he was almost able to put the same team out week after week after week. Um, luckily, you could say, fortunately, um, it would appear that they avoided uh, any certainly long-term injuries yeah. to key players. They may have been a wee bit fortunate when it came to suspensions as well. You could argue it was a different era and maybe the cards weren't really flashed as freely. It's but a myth to say it was 12. Oh, it's, I know. It's about 16 it's, it's, or 17 aye, players. 15 maybe I would have said, right? Yeah. But all I'm saying is, that for me is the only chance that Celtic would have of making a dent in the Champions League and getting through the group is if the fact that um, Ange Postecoglou said these guys another year under his belt yeah. since getting knocked out of three competitions if he can can fashion that same team keep keep, and keep polishing and keep polishing and keep those guys together then I think that is maybe their best chance because Celtic are not going to be able to bring in players that, will, that, will, that would be a defining moment in uh, a Champions League game they can't do that mm. that's, that, that's a way up there what he's hoping for is a recruitment plan. Now you only have to look at you know they're going to Japan. Um, this is what Ange Postecoglou had to say um, over the last couple 
couple of hours, a few hours ago uh, on Japan. We're really looking forward to our summer tour to Japan. Uh, we're sure it'll be hugely successful for the club and the excellent preparation for next season. Uh, as we saw from our brilliant visit to Australia last year, the appetite for Celtic globally is huge and it's right that we maximise these great opportunities and show the world all that is great about our club. Uh, we wanted to pay respect to Japanese football so we're delighted to be engaging with the J-League and its clubs, of course, it, they want to load the bases with money, Ruffy, of to, of try, to try and get at least a situation where they can continue to raid the Japanese market or unearth, you know, there's suggestions that they're looking at, um, you know, a player um, in Europe, in Turkey, I think it is, um, that might be somebody that everybody's chasing, that they might get first grab on by saying, as you mentioned there, here's European football for you. But nevertheless, it's a dilemma. His main dilemma right now is to try and win the treble against an Inverness side um, that really, I think, would have favoured playing Rangers um, rather than this uh, current Celtic side.